In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to record using Video Ninja. This is a very basic video, just a demonstration, not a tutorial. It's to help those who are new to Video Ninja. Uh, we have Video Ninja opened right now. It's a browser-based app primarily. There's nothing you need to download. Uh, you can record using just Video Ninja. Now, despite it saying add your camera to OBS, you don't have to use OBS. Most users do, which is why I focus on OBS quite a bit. Um, I'll also demonstrate how to record in OBS though. Now the simplest way to record a video in Video Ninja is we just click add a camera. We can select our camera, our microphone, and we can just right click the video and hit record. Now on the top right, you'll see that it's streaming to our disk, it's downloading. And we can stop the recording by clicking stop. It's now saved as a WebM file to our, our downloads folder. So whatever your default downloads folder is for your browser, it will save there. Now, most people are not using Video Ninja to record just themselves. They're trying to remote, uh, remote record someone. So let's say uh, I'm the remote guest. I have a view link. I can send this to the person who I want to record the video. They now see me. And uh, the same concept, I can just hit record, record to disk. It's now recording to my disk. And whenever I want to stop recording, I can right click and say, stop recording. Uh, pretty simple. Now there, there's a lot of parameters with Video Ninja, a lot of options. Um, some of them are more advanced. You can go to the documentation to find out more information. But for example, I can add the uh, record as a URL parameter, reload the page. And when I join now, there's a, a new button added to the menu. And if I press that, it records. And if I press it again, it stops. So instead of right clicking, you can add a, a dedicated record button to the page. Now in this setup, uh, I can record remotely, I can remote locally at the same time. So if I have a guest, I can record them and they can record themselves. The benefit of that is you get a higher quality stream if the guest records themselves, because it's not going through the internet. But if you're recording remotely, uh, you might find it just valuable having that copy local and ready to go for you. So you, you can record both remotely and locally. Cool. Uh, now there's, that didn't really give us an option to have a conversation. But what, what we can do is we can go create a room. And I can join the room as a, as a host, as the director of the room. And now I have an invite link. I can invite multiple people to this room. So I'll invite myself and I'll invite one other guest. Uh, let's invite someone named Streamlabs. As a director, I can customize the links if I want to. Um, I won't worry about those, so I'll just focus on this. I can then add my microphone. Um, and now everyone sees everyone. So we have this uh, three-way call going. One, two, three, where I'm the director. I can change my microphone here, change my video, and we're all having a conversation. The difference is I'm the director, not a guest. These are guests, but as the director, I get control. I can hang someone up so I can kick this person out of the call and they get kicked out. Now, if I want to record this individual, I have some options. Uh, I go to click on additional controls. I can say record local. I can enter a bit rate. So the default's four megabits per second, but we can change that to whatever we want. Now we see that we're recording the stream. I can also record remotely. So I can record the video, uh, you know, on this person's computer. So I have two downloads going. So if we want to have a remote and a local copy of the stream, we can do that as a director without the guest needing to do anything. 
when we hit stop, it saves the downloads. I could do something like request a file, and then the guest is asked to upload the file. We just have to then select the file to upload to you. And when it uploads, you get it on your end. Um, I hit cancel, time's out. Okay, cool. Now, if I want them to upload it while I'm recording, uh, there's another option. This is allowing me to upload to my Google Drive. Uh, this option will then, let me try it out actually. Um, oops. Continue. Federate. Okay, so now the guest, you can see on the, on the bottom here, they have this status bar saying how much of their video is uploaded to my Google Drive. And I get to see the how much of it has been uploaded. So um, pretty much the entire thing has been uploaded. And I can then stop recording. And it will then say Google Drive has, has uploaded. So now I have a copy of it locally on my computer, or their computer in this case, but also on Google Drive, on my Google Drive. So when we're done, I can just stop it, wait for it to finish uploading, and then have a high quality copy available. All this without needing OBS at all. We had some pretty, pretty cool things going here. Now, if I wanted to record an OBS, this guest, I can take either a group link, a, gr a group scene link, or I can take a solo scene link, a solo link, uh, copy solo link. So I'm gonna open up OBS now. Uh, here we go. And if we want to record a Video Ninja source, we click on one of our scenes in OBS. We say plus browser source, browser, okay. Hit okay. We're going to paste our scene link or our, our scene solo link in here, our solo link. We're going to put in a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. And then we're going to click control audio via OBS. If you don't see that, just scroll down and you'll see it. Hit OK. I am now in OBS. We see my audio going up and down in the browser source. This means we're capturing the audio. You won't hear the audio through OBS by default, but you should see it in this audio meter. And then we can just hit record. So now I'm recording this guest into OBS what I see is what I'm recording. I can do things like add text on top. Um, hello, or maybe it's Steve. I can put that here. And now the recording will have Steve as an overlay. OBS is nice uh, because you have more recording options. Um, hope it, you have uh, different container formats. With Video Ninja, you really only have WebM if you're using Chrome or H um, or MP4 if you're using Safari. But here we have uh, lots of options to record with. We also can use hardware acceleration. And while Video Ninja does sometimes use hardware acceleration, you don't have as much control over it. Often it's just software. So this is kind of nice. Um, so I, I tend to use OBS for recording instead of the browser, but it's not required. It, it just, it tends to be a little more um, reliable if something breaks, or if I want fixed resolutions or fixed frame rates, OBS will give me uh, more flexibility over the file recording, the frame rates, things like that. Where Video Ninja in the browser, because we're using the browser, I don't have as many controls and options. Okay. Uh, the latency, as you can see, um, you can hear me, but uh, the latency, the latency is, is, is really rather almost non-existent um, between 70 to 200 milliseconds. Okay, so that's uh, the end of this demo video. I hope that was helpful. There's lots of advanced uh, options, increasing the bitrate, being audio only, 
uh, H.264 options and, and more. Uh, but for now, hopefully that helps.